it's July 17th of 2015 and apparently I had better do another walking garden tour or we're going to completely miss the lilies. I've got the strawberries up in pots here because I'm about ready to tarp over the strawberry area. That one was getting too full with water so it's tipped to let some of the water out. Um, it doesn't have drainage holes. So here we have the front lawn and some junk. <laughs> That's the uh, fire pit and I don't know if you've ever seen but inside this is a bench. I need to trim it free so I can sit in it because uh, it's become a bit of a bug cave. So, um, yeah, over here we have elderberries and the zebra grass has gotten pretty tall behind. And there's the elderberries. The rose is done. That's one of the Floribunda red rose stems. Over here we have Akashiso and coriander slash cilantro. It's the same plant. That's all comfrey, which is really good for healing time. Um, increases uh, healing compounds in um, skin healing by five times, according to the German study, the commissiony. Here we have some lilies. Oh, I wish you could smell them too. They're phenomenal. I love them. And then there's white ones. And then there's more of that kind. And these are just the short little guys. They're about ah, two, three foot tall. And... Echinacea is still going. This is the far side of the elderberry, so my front yard is very private. And we've got some escaped wormwood here. Seeds very readily. Had to special order the seeds though. Um, oh, and in the front, the um, this white and pink little flowers. Not this good. This is a non-edible sweet pea. The white and pink misty flowers are um, oregano. So here we have scented marigold and a weed. That's an iris. That's a daylily. There's the daylily coming out of this guy. Boop. Isn't he cute? He's cute. Okay, so we're going to go on down here. I really need to repot my raspberries. They're um, they're doing all right, but um, as you can see, the pots are falling apart, and actually, the dirt's getting really compacted too. So, if this weren't so wet a summer, they would nom would definitely be dead by now. But it's been pouring all year, so no troubles. Here's my sun choke. Oh, it's got a couple weeds in it too. And this is like a potato substitute that happens to be relative of a sunflower. So in the late fall it also puts out very attractive blooms. I have self-seeded tomatoes in the front here. And then and that was a white lily. It's gone droopy. And then these yellow ones in the background. You can see that the um, butterfly weed is starting to put out its flowers. This one nearest has gone a bit pink. Dill. My god, the dill did itself. Now, as a reminder, we're about to walk into my vegetable garden, which is in the back. And by back, I mean street side, because I count the cliff as my front yard. Um, as a reminder, I didn't actively plant anything. All of this has just been a matter of me deciding what to weed out not plant anything. So over here we have my uh, permacultured black currants really starting to take. This 
that, these, all covered in berries like that. Um, the radishes are going to seed again, all these weird little pods. This carrot has decided that being a carrot is fun. I never harvested it last year. Oops. Ah, uh, yeah. So up here we have all of these. And I would say this plant's about 10 to 12 foot tall now. Really brings in the pollinators. I am fighting my way past the black currant. These are from Phipps. I don't know what they are, but they're freaking adorable. I took the seeds from a plant that was doing the dandelion blowy thing. And now they're in my yard. So this is all dill, all of this misty stuff. And then underneath is tomatoes and I need to weed. And this is the mullen, which is starting to bloom. In ancient times, the Romans used these as torches. They dipped them in olive oil and, and um, they were traditional to funeral marches. All right, I'm gonna move some dill. It's in my way. It's starting to go to seed. Check that out. That lily's done. This one and that one are not. My property line is here. The stuff beyond is in those is in um, planter boxes not mine neither is that garage not mine so these were all lilies also one that went whomp over the path as well this is but i like it down there and have all of the uh scented marigolds here too calendula same thing and uh, they just sell free seed. They're really cute. I like them. And then in here, these were all Roma tomatoes last year, and it looks like I'm getting a few little baby tomatoes. Of Find out what kind those are. Finally starting to fruit. That took a while. Saskatoon cherry. Both done. Kiwi, once again doing nothing. Really need to cut it down and just be done with that plant because it takes up a lot of space and doesn't do anything for me. Hardy kiwi is, uh, survives the winter. Fruit, eh, not so much. So, yeah, this is the return path on the other side. We've got these, um, teepees made out of the cut branches of my lilac, which is this with a weed cherry tree coming out of it that I also have to take care of because that's like three years worth of growth. That's it's not good. Um, it's going to take over. So, and shade my garden. So, um, yeah, there's, that's feverfew. It's a weed. It's really good for headaches. This is asparagus. I've got a rhubarb down here. That's a rhubarb. This is ladies' mantle. And then we're back where we started. I'm just gonna hop across. This is my little um, gnome home. This was all just daffodils in there. Nothing planted itself in there, so it's not doing anything. Big old sage. Smaller sage. Um, St. John's wort. These are forage. They're really falling over. The squash is doing great. These winter squash are what happen if you just throw a spaghetti squash in the yard. Uh, I don't know if there's gonna be any ripe. Yeah, there's, there's a green gourd they get about a foot and a half long and about eight inches wide. And you can eat them when they're wee little babies like that too. And, oh, that might actually end up being an actual spaghetti squash over there, because it's a different color. It looks like I got a proper spaghetti squash strain. They're a hybrid, so it's only one two specific um, pollen cross that you end up with the exact right plant. Still way overgrown over here. Hopefully next time I show you a video, this will be completely under a tarp. This is fennel. I thought all the fennel was dead, but apparently not. 
and then we've got quite a lot of flowers up here. Oh gosh, I'm having trouble. All right. These are the echinacea and lilies again. And there was a yellow lily up there, but it's done. And that's an apple inside the hedge. I need to trim the hedge. And a pear also inside. Same hedge needing trimmed. Very overgrown hedge. This all needs weeded too. Geez, we've had a lot of rain this year. So, oh, look, isn't he cute? Those get like, yeah, about 18 inches in length. Adorable. So, yep, that, that's the front yard. And that's the garden. I wonder if there's anything inside the shed of kiwi. <laughs> the kiwi shed. Ouch. Oh, Borage, you're spiny. Nope. <laughs> we got Cleomies back here. Or however you say that. Oh, so much weeding necessary. My gracious grasses. Spiny things that seed. This is why I love the yellow sedum is it just chokes all the weeds out. It's very, very nice. Oh, and this is catnip. With a little bumblebee on it. Hi, little bumblebee. Oh, and my, my neighbor's honeybees. There's a sweet little honeybee. Yay. And a wee little bee type thing. <laughs> Yay, bees. <laughs> they like catnip, apparently. All right, well, happy July. It's, uh, it's alive out here. Enjoy your summer.